Many individuals have played football in the sport's history. Only a few play in college, and still fewer make it to the National Football League. One of those athletes that made it to the NFL ranks is Steve August. He finished playing at the University of Tulsa in 1977, then was a first round pick of the Seattle Seahawks, where he played until he was traded to the Pittsburgh Steelers in 1984. Unless you were ding so bad that you came off the field and, pe and you were like talking nonsense, and that's usually when you got attention. Once they straightened up and gave them a good answer and they felt comfortable, they were back in the game. So there was no protocol that if you had some sort of concussion, it was just, you know, you, they wanted you to be able to operate. Down in Scuba, Mississippi, at East Mississippi Community College, Marcus Wood is the offensive coordinator. He used to play for the Lions in his college playing days. Now, his offenses are putting up around 51 to 52 points per game. Back in those days, if you had an injury, they might hold you out for a day or two, and you were right back in the mix. I had one that was a, a significant one uh, when I was playing junior college ball, where I lost my m memory for a day or two and just didn't recall. I played in a game that I, I couldn't tell you about. A more recent perspective on the game, not necessarily in the thick of the concussion revelation, comes from Derek Gove. He was a four-year walk-on running back at the University of Oklahoma from 2005 to 2008. Today, he is the Vice President of Sales for Unequal Technologies. It wasn't too long ago, however, there, there, what we know is symptomatic now. There was plenty of guys that likely had them. The knowledge and the training base just was not there on what concussions really were, what the symptoms of them were. Ultimately, we weren't looking for them. Take another trip on I-35, this time south, and you'll run into Denton, home of North Texas University, where Kendrick Brown played wide receiver. 20 miles to the east sits Little Elm High School, where today, Brown is the head football coach. If there was an incident where someone had a head injury, a player, uh, I do know that that was the tough man syndrome. There wasn't a lot of education out on that. The player, because the coaches would get on to the player, players didn't want to let the coaches or players down, players would get back in there. So that was typical uh, of the 90s. One of Brown's players at Little Elm, Brian Byram, is a junior and plays wide receiver. Like Cam, Brian has aspirations of a long football career. He moved from his hometown of Harlingen, Texas, to live with relatives in Dallas just to possibly get a chance to get noticed by college scouts. However, it hasn't come without its bumps in the road starting last fall. First concussion, I was playing corner, and I was, as I was going up, I caught the ball, but I was like leaned backwards kind of, and my head just slammed. Got up, was a little fuzzy, didn't really know what was going on. Went to the sideline and played the rest of the practice. Had to fill out a concussion chart. Had to wear sunglasses throughout the day sometimes. You saw there the frustration of a kid that wanted to get back out on the field quickly, but then he was still having symptoms. A few weeks later, we were going snowboarding in Colorado. It wasn't really powdery, and I went to break on my board, and my board just caught in the snow, and I just, just went hit, started rolling, and got up, and this was, this was worse than the first time. Distorted, didn't know what was going on, just saw white. Worst headache I've ever had in my life. I look at my phone, and I couldn't read. What we do is we show an education piece at the beginning of the year that helps educate not only our coaches, but also our players about concussion, symptoms of concussion, steps that you take to treat someone that has a concussion. While concussion as an injury is difficult to deal with, there remains an unrelenting conflict in its progression, the lack of disclosure by an athlete. I'd probably play the game out, honestly, and just keep going. Even if you're out a day, you'll drop down on the leaderboards. We live in a culture of sports that penalizes those who are hurt. To the extent that a, that a player divulges that they're indeed injured, they get pulled, and when you don't play, you don't move forward. 
there wasn't much discussion or any that I can remember on concussion. You know, I've been dinged and, you know, knocked out, you know, once before and just many times been woozy, but I never reported anything like that. Especially in the quarterback position, you're looked at as the leader, you're never going to pull yourself out of the game. If you have signs and symptoms, you need to relay those so they can be properly evaluated and properly cared for and properly returned. Moves have been made for the safety of the game. From the $765 million lawsuit between the NFL and retired players for injury settlements, to the Illinois legislature passing a bill requiring youth football coaches to get concussion training. It's about understanding the risk of a high contact sport and being educated to play the game properly. I think most of them have that embedded in them when they're young, that they realize that it is a contact sport, it is a violent game by nature. Try to educate and you hope that the individuals, the athletes are making wise decisions. We've become better educated in regards to knowing how to deal with a concussion and using the proper steps to make sure that our, our athletes get back on the field safe. Even with all the hype, a greater appreciation and understanding of concussion evolves every day. While Gove used to play at OU, he is now looking to develop the way of the future with unequal technologies, a firm specializing in athletic safety equipment. We started off as a military focused company uh, working with Kevlar composite padding, uh, where Kevlar was an ingredient uh, when combined with our Acceleron uh, proprietary foam materials. What it's allowed us to do is take traditional padding and exponentially get that much more shock suppression, g-force reduction out of it, um, and overall acceleration reduction out of it. Because that's the goal anytime that a body's taking an impact is reduce the acceleration, reduce the peak g-forces, which causes injury. The future is bright based on evolving technology and studies. It's a Kevlar liner that drops right into the pad. It's called the gyro, and it's a freestanding pad that literally can drop in any helmet for football on the market, not adhere to it, not attach to it, and be a freestanding piece while still keeping the helmet functional uh, without having to take anything out. Our big goal is to do a longitudinal study. So all the athletes that we're enrolling now, or at least within the first three years, and we're estimating about 25,000. We're hoping that we can track them um, for 10 years after they get out of school, 20 years, 30 years, 40 years and really make it a long-term study on how concussion affects neurological function. For any athlete, there is life beyond their sport. Everyone's plussed over here! Everyone's plussed over here! For Trickett, his playing days may be over, but he still remains close to the game he loves. Middle of the field safety. He was named quarterback's coach at East Mississippi Community College in March. I'm completely moved on um, and I get my little football you know fill each day when I warm up with the guys and I have to go out there and throw with them and the, uh, the staff I'm with has been phenomenal they've really just taken me in. I think he's kind of a shining star we think he's a bright guy that's on the rise no question about it looks at the game he is a very mature young coach. Me having this job and still being around football and still being in it, it keeps that competitive spirit alive. I'm still interacting and I'm still doing the game that I love. I'm not the ex-quarterback, I'm their quarterback coach. Bring it up, bring it up, bring it up. 